Most people know this city as Liberec, one of the biggest cities in the Czech Republic, but only a few remember its original name. Reichenberg. Yes, you heard me correctly. This city used to have a German name. In fact, in 1910, during the golden age of the city's history, only 7% of people who lived here were Czech. Ten years later, this number increased to almost 20%, but still, most people who lived here were German. And just before the beginning of the Second World War, the party that won the local election here was called Sudeten German Party. It was led by a man called Konrad Henlein, and he made a secret alliance with Adolf Hitler. Hitler. How did it happen? Let's travel back in time when Reichenberg was a small feudal town on the map of Bohemia. Perhaps the most famous building from that period is Liberec Chateau, built by a Rodern family whose crest you can find on the crest of Liberec. Another historical site from that time are these houses from the 17th century. Back then, most of the buildings in Liberec looked like that. They're called Wallenstein houses, after Albrecht von Wallenstein, a nobleman who owned the lands around here. Interestingly, these houses were inhabited by the Drapers, and just 100 years later, Liberec became famous thanks to its large drapery production, which transformed it into the second largest city in Czech lands. In many respects, it is the merit of Liebig family, who built a huge factory here called Liebig & Co. You might know it as Textiliana, as it was nationalized and renamed after Second World War. Anyway, Liebig's family is responsible for the development of the city. And even today, if you would take a stone and throw it into any direction in Liberec, big chance it will land next to a building they constructed, sponsored or owned. Let's try it. But of course, I will not be throwing stones anywhere. That's kind of dangerous. We have snowballs. Ha! Huh. Okay, here we go. Liebig Chateau. That's an obvious one. The chateau stood right beside the factory of the Liebig family. Liberec Gardens. This was a cultural and social center. Guess who helped building it? The Liebig family, of course. There is another place around this beautiful building that I would like to show you, but we will do it in the second half of the video. Chamber of Trade and Commerce. Nowadays a hospital, founded by John Liebig, who also was its president. The North Bohemian Museum, the oldest museum of applied arts in the Czech Republic, established in 1873. Guess who was the president of the museum's board of trustees and participated in the purchase of its collection in Vienna? John Liebig. His family even donated their collection of noble metals, the antiques from the Frankfurt Villa, and also a large amount of money designated for the expansion of museum's collections. We will visit this one in the second half of the video. And of course, the gem of Liberec is its gorgeous town hall, built in transalpine renaissance style. Franz Liebig Jr. donated 100,000 golden coins for the construction of this town hall, and the grateful citizens of Liberec decided to erect the statue dedicated to him and his relative and place them next to the entrance to the town hall. Wait a minute. Where are the statues? And while I couldn't find any information on why statues are not standing here anymore, looking at Liberec's history, it seems pretty logical. Let's go back to 1938, when the Sudeten German party had won the local elections and the head of the party, Konrad Henlein, who was actually born in Liberec, had negotiated a secret deal with Adolf Hitler behind the back of Czechoslovak officials. So when Czech lands were annexed after the Munich Agreement and the Nazi troops crossed the border to here, he was already prepared to welcome them. Adolf Hitler arrived to Reichenberg, the new capital of Sudetenland, on December 2, 1938. He visited the House of Trade and the theater and gave his last election speech in the city hall. And this square was actually named after Adolf Hitler. Reichenberg became one of the most important cities for Nazis in this area. The old factories started to be used for their production, and there were numerous labor camps for prisoners of war, many of them from USSR and the Roma population. And of course, when we are talking about the Second World War history, we have to mention the burning of the largest synagogue of Liberec during the Crystal Night of November 9, 1938. 
Today, you can find a modern synagogue built here as part of the city library complex. This is perhaps the part of history that many wish to forget, but how can you? Especially when you are sitting at the bus stop created by David Cherny, who was inspired by these events. It is called a Feast of Giants, and you can see a toppled menorah, Czech and German beer mugs, a bouquet of Venus flytraps, and served on a plate with sausages, a head of, guess who? Conrad Henlein, of course. Needless to say, there is not a single place in Liberec nowadays that is named after this man. And the former Adolf Hitler Platz is also named differently today. It is called Edward Benesch's Square. Edward Benesch was a president of Czechoslovakia after Second World War, even though the story behind this name is also sad. After the end of the Second World War, all German nationals were expelled from the Czech lands through Benesch decrees. During that expulsion, thousands of people were killed, thousands died from hunger, and diseases afterwards. This is still a pretty controversial topic in Czech history. Up until recently, it was not a very much discussed topic. The Liberates Museum doesn't shy away from its Second World War history, though. The museum is worth visiting. They have a huge collection of art from Middle Ages and Renaissance to modern pieces. We also recommend the gallery located across the road from there in the former spa house. As you can see, despite its dark history, there is another side to Liberec. Many people nowadays know this city because of its two sides, one of which we are also visiting today. And if you are Czech and you are watching this video, you are probably wondering if we are going to visit the Jeshtet mountain. Actually, that has been my dream for many years. About two years ago, there was an accident, so they closed the funicular, and now the only way to get there is either by car, which we don't have, or by walking, which I didn't want to attempt in this cold weather. So we decided to leave this one for another time. Liberec Zoo. It is the oldest zoo in the Czech Republic. And despite the cold weather that day, we spent two hours walking around because there's so much to see. Ah, I think they brought them food. Every time we turn around and then we'll go back, they're looking our way. The star of the zoo is the white tiger, who was enjoying his afternoon nap when we came. His neighbors also looked like a dangerous bunch. There's even a telephone number to call if something goes wrong. How often do you think they, somebody calls this number? <laughs> this killing machine noticed us walking up the path. I think before we noticed it, it was already sitting there like... I wish they put an emotional support number in their elephant enclosure, because I left in tears. All good, just really like elephants. Did you actually feel me crying? Yes. <laughs> Most people fake it. You actually do it. <laughs> but my absolute favorite were the rat pandas. And see, oh, ta -da, ta -da. We must have spent 30 minutes just staring at them walking around. 
I had to get a little souvenir to remember them by. And there is a, like a banknote with a red panda. How's it get it? This one. How much? 170 crowns. F then. No, it costs 80 crowns. It's oh. just like a worth 170. Oh. oh. Okay. Zoara. Zoara. How do I get it up? We hope you enjoyed our video and we'll see you guys soon. Bye!